Welcome to VMware vSphere 5.1 Administration. My name is Glenn Martin, and in this video, we're going to take a look at what we're going to cover in this video series, and also what won't be covered. The course objective really is to provide you with an overview of how to install and configure a vSphere 5.1 environment that would be appropriate for a development and testing lab. Before going into production, you're going to need to do a bit more experimenting and gain a bit more experience with the environment and how to troubleshoot and how best to integrate it to your environment. But we will take a look at the configuration walkthrough of the various major features, and that'll help you quickly familiarize yourself with the core concepts of vSphere and how to make use of them. In order to assist with your integration into your future production environment or into your dev environment, we'll also take a look at some of the design decision points that you'll have to make, particularly in network and storage integration from a high availability and also a performance perspective. So in the first section, we're going to do the introduction as we're doing right now, but we'll look at the installation and initial configuration. So the install, the DCUI menu-driven interface, the ESXi shell, and also managing our hosts directly using the vSphere client. Then we'll take a look at configuring networking, including vSwitches, port groups, and VM kernel interfaces, teaming, load balancing, and network failover for setting up high availability, high performance network environments for virtual machines. In the storage section, we'll also take a look at iSCSI, VMFS, the network file system, and path selection policy. In my environment, I'm really not able to provide any fiber channel storage. We will take a look at some of the issues related to how path selection works in terms of multipathing solutions and some of the issues that will come up even in larger environments where you may have a storage array based on fiber channel and or storage arrays that support things such as VAAI, the vSphere Advanced Array Integration. We'll also take a look at virtual machines. We'll look at installing guest operating systems and installing and keeping the VMware tools up to date. And we'll also take a look at how we can use para-virtualized devices such as the PVSCSI driver to provide even lower virtualization overhead than we typically would see and when it would be appropriate to use those things and when it's not. We'll also take a look at setting up vCenter and some of the permission issues, the task scheduling that we can do, alerts and events, and also deploying virtual machines from templates, as well as using the vSphere web client, which in future editions should replace the vCenter Windows-based installation. That's primarily what I'm going to focus on in this series is the Windows-based environment rather than the web environment. We're also going to take a look at performance and the various graphs and charts that we can do using vCenter. We'll take a look at ESX Top, which we can use from the shell for measuring performance and also doing various management tasks. We'll take a look at setting reservations and limits so that we can either guarantee or prevent overuse of resources by virtual machines. And we'll also take a look at how we can do that for groups of virtual machines using resource pools. We'll also look at moving virtual machines from one host to another while they're running using vMotion or from one data store to another using storage vMotion. The distributed resource scheduler is going to allow us to do that on an automated basis based on load demand. So we're going to see how we can use the distributed resource scheduler to dynamically adapt our workload to the available server environment. And we'll also take a look at how we can protect virtual machines from host failure or even potentially problems within the virtual machine using high availability. We'll look at keeping vSphere up to date using the vSphere Update Manager. And we'll also take a look at backups using vSphere Data Protection. In terms of what we're not going to have time to cover in this or that we couldn't reproduce in a lab environment, we're not going to take a look at the vCenter Linux appliance or the virtual NFS storage appliance. We're not going to really look at any scripting or automation using Orchestrator or the vCly or PowerCly packages. We're not going to take a look at running virtual machines on multiple hosts simultaneously using fault tolerance. And we're also not going to get into the various enterprise scale features like fiber channel, the distributed vSwitches, host profiles, and auto deploy where we can actually boot ESXi using Pixie every time a server is activated, so there's actually no local installation at all, or using vShield or vApp to either protect virtual machines or to group virtual machines together to provide a service. So that should give you an idea as to the scope of the course and what you can expect from it. Take a look at the video table of contents and then start jumping in, but you'll probably want to start with the installation.